everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Apollonia Rockwell Show. I have a very special guest today. I'm so excited to chat with you, Phil. First of all, let me just give a little brief intro. So Phil Palin is a personal branding expert and keynote speaker. His non-conventional approach to digital marketing and talent for social media has built him, um, built him a global audience. So I'm so excited to ask you so many questions around that. And then the last thing I want to share up front is that he is the author of AI for Small Business. Welcome to the show, Phil. How are you doing today? Thank you so much for that warm welcome. And I have to say, it sounds new to me and it sounds exciting to say that I'm an author and to hear the name of the book. I've been quietly working away trying to finish that book. Um, But you found me within a week of that manuscript being finished so it was I destiny. am, <laughs> yeah, I am just as excited as you to have the conversation we're going to have. And I'm also really interested in your background and your industry and your clients and listeners as well. I think we're going to, we're going to have a fun conversation. I already know it because doing my research on you, Phil, I know that you've worked with multiple industries. You know, this is not one industry that we're talking about. Um, I was sharing with you that my clients and listeners are, um, our clients for true safety are large, small, even medium sized businesses, um, in the construction industry, oil and gas, manufacturing, trucking. And so when I'm, doing our research on you, I'm like AI for small business, branding for small business. And I know that means so much because your, your expertise is not just small business. I know that I know you've worked with, um, with multiple platforms, with multiple companies and clients. So I just feel like I'm your student today. And I just want to ask you so many questions about your book because it is so needed. I'll tell you right now, like I don't I feel that as much as I know about AI and and all that, I don't, I feel like I'm still a newbie and I want to understand what strategies that you've been exploring and how, um, how you've been able to help businesses grow. So So, tell me, how did you get to even writing the book? Like, tell me the pre-story to even get to that point. I think you're going to appreciate the story, but the first thing I'm going to tell you is you are not behind There is nothing, there's no urgency for you to learn this stuff by tomorrow. In fact, I think it's a greater risk right now that we get derailed or distracted by gimmicks in the AI space. And you know, as a business owner, the most important thing to focus on is, well, I would say two things, what you love to do. Mm -hmm. And this is what I've been preaching pre-AI when I'm building a brand, either for a person or a company. Mm -hmm. And yes, you're right. Personal branding is something that people often associate with me and my work, because that's what I've been doing for all of these years. But Mm -hmm. I've worked, you know, one of my clients is is a Lundin mining based in Canada with four or five mines all around the world. So we work with mining companies. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to dive into all this. So that's why I'm so literally like um it's it's been it's been interesting because People come to me and they say, like, are you an expert in, uh, well, let's say mining, for example, or hospitality or, well, I say, no, I'm not an expert in that. You are. It's my job to figure out how you stand out online. And, and maybe we'll, we'll talk first about branding. Branding is really just achieving consistency between the in-person experience and the online version of yourself. I'm sure we'll, we'll dive into that, but AI is kind of like this tsunami wave that has just hit us. And yes. many people feel exactly how you feel, yeah. which is it, the preface oh, is like, you know, I'm excited to learn from you. I have no mm-hmm. idea what I'm doing. I've tried a few of these tools yes. and it's overwhelming and it's overwhelming. That's exactly where I'm at. That's it's overwhelming I, for everyone. It's overwhelming for me, to be honest. Want to hear something refreshing? Yes. I'm holding yeah. up. We're recording an audio podcast, but I'm holding up. It's now just a piece of paper, but this is the cover of the book. And I'm telling you that if I was quizzed on this book right now that I wrote, I don't even know that I would pass. Luckily, the publishing date between now, well, at the time of recording this, we've got a few more months, but this book, writing this book has required so much research. I love that. Mm -hmm. Beyond just me sharing thoughts and ideas, because guess what? I'm not an expert in this either. We've only been talking about this in terms of it being democratized or generally Mm -hmm. accessible for Mm -hmm. around a year. 
Right. So we need to get over this idea that like we're behind. That or we're so behind. We're behind the curve. Like, yeah, we're not. We're not. You need to be focused on running your business and to bring us back full circle here. Focus on the things that you love to do and focus on the areas in business where you make highest impact. Those are the only things that matter as a business owner, big or small. I think you just recaptured the audience. If they like watch the, you know, if they read your bio and the podcast and they're listening to the intro and I'm like, AI specialist, we have Phil on the show. And they're like, okay, maybe this might not be for me because I'm not even there yet. I feel like you just so quickly recaptured everyone that thought that this was out of their league. Because you just, you know, like you said, this is refreshing news. Hey, number one, stop. Continue to listen on and hang on here. The, you, most of us are feeling behind. And so yeah. I love that you start out by saying that because I feel like I can, you know, learn, still learn so much. And I love how you just really captured exactly where I'm at. This last 12 months, I've engaged in a few AI tools. Sure, we use ChatGPT. I've tried a couple other apps like branding AI apps that I had zero luck with. And I am back to square one. The only thing I'm using is ChatGPT. Um, But the fact that you're telling me and other business owners still... Eye on the prize with your business. What is it that you do best? So tell me what your clients, hey, they're like, hey, Phil, I want to grow my business. Um, Yeah. So I don't, well, AI, AI can be so many different things. okay? Okay. And so for me, the thing that I get excited about and the thing I talk about on podcasts or on stage or with clients, Mm -hmm. for me, my source of excitement around AI is rooted in. AI is a tool for productivity. So okay. my mm-hmm. audience are busy entrepreneurs, small business owners, and yeah. then sometimes corporations. And there's a lot on our to-do list that we're trying to work through. And naturally, we might think, okay, there's more on my to-do list than I can handle myself. So I need yeah. to delegate has mm-hmm. always been the next the next route, right? There's a lot yes. I need to do. I need to ask for help. I need to mm-hmm. delegate tasks, hire, et cetera. And that's great. We're still going to need that. But I would say in the last year, we've now added a step before delegation, okay. which is automation. Instead of just delegating just a task sense. to a human, yes. what could we automate in our business? And I can mm-hmm. give you an example if you want, something that is really fresh yeah. um, for me. An example I get a lot. I, I create, I love creating content. Like I love doing podcast interviews and I love making videos and I love helping people in that way. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. I will do brand deals. I partner with brands, AI brands. That's how this whole book deal came about, by the way. I didn't go to a publisher. I didn't pitch the idea. The publisher came to me and said, we've seen your YouTube videos. Literally they came to me from YouTube and they said, you explain things really well. Here's the book title. Here's the advance. Are you interested? First email. And I said, Yes. So the need was there. It's not even like you made the book and hope, hopefully there's a need here. The need just was knocking at your door saying, Hey, you the need was, we need a, a book way. and we need an author. Um, so wow. the truth is that's why I, I, I feel a little bit like an imposter to speak as an expert on this topic, given that I've only been doing it for, for a year, just really trying to be a resource to people. But I am a bit of a nerd when it comes to trying AI tech tools. Mm-hmm. And I, the advice I give myself and give my clients is try not to get distracted. So we have to first mm-hmm. focus on what are our business needs? Okay. That's the most important thing. So before we rattle off a list of all my favorite AI tools, I first want to hear what are the pain points? What are the areas in business that are taking you a lot of time that are derailing you from spending your time doing the things you love. Mm -hmm. I think it's an important reminder. Capitalism suggests that like business owners need to focus exclusively on the areas where you make the highest income and highest profit margins and highest Mm -hmm. revenue. Mm -hmm. Um, But actually, but actually I think there are things that you might enjoy doing and Mm -hmm. you should keep doing those things. Don't just get Mm -hmm. rid of them because you don't like it. 
even if it's administrative or it's task oriented, if it's something you really enjoy, then I believe you should still make time for that. But if it's something you don't enjoy, for me, responding to emails, requesting uh, like content partnerships. I get like 30 emails a day from brands that are like, Phil, will you make a video about my my marketing platform or feature my tool or affiliate sale, blah, blah, blah. And if I, I, I can have a full time just replying to those emails. It okay. takes too long. And I have clients and I have podcasts, I have people like you to chat with. Yeah. And so yeah. what I do is I use an email plugin. This one is called Ellie. And um, I choose the mood of the reply that I want to give. Oh my and goodness. I have an optional area to provide context. So in my case, if it's an email where I'm saying I don't do purely affiliate deals, that's mm -hmm. just an example of my day to day. I could give the AI that context in a few words and click okay. write email and it will draft a reply for me. And it took then, I might change a word here and there. Sure. I'll definitely read sure. the email before I hit send. But that yeah. means that I wrote an email in three seconds instead of two minutes, five minutes, seven minutes for a, a longer email. And that oh, might not seem like a long time, but those minutes really compound. Um Absolutely. The, the, Anyone with a busy schedule can understand exactly the scenario that you're just mentioning. Well, yes. exactly. And I think there's also fear around, well, Phil, um, does this mean that, you know, if we automate before we delegate, does this mean that AI is going to take people's jobs? Mm -hmm. Yes and no. AI mm -hmm. is going to take jobs from people in, in industries and situations where it does the job better. And if we want to look at numbers on that, Goldman Sachs did a study last year on the U.S. workforce that said that 63% of industries and jobs will be complemented by AI, 7% will be replaced, and 30% will be unaffected. What do you think about those stats? I think they're wonderful because yeah. I think if 63% yeah. of the people in a room at a party are going to experience AI making their jobs better. Yes. Enabling mm -hmm. humans to do the things that humans are best at, which yes. are rooted in storytelling, rooted in yes. human connection. Mm -hmm. um, that's why I'm not worried about it. I am an optimist, but I'm not worried. I think, I think I innovation needs to happen regardless of AI. And I think, Yep. Computing speed, computing information, AI can do it bad, you know, do it better and faster than humans. And, mm -hmm. but at the same time, there's a lot of things that AI cannot do as well as humans. And that's what we need to be doing. And I love how you just mentioned, you know, some key places that if administrative, repetitive um, tasks were taken off of our plate, it's okay. And that we can be left with the things that we as humans can do best. I love how you mentioned storytelling. Um, I heard you really say um, connect, like connection. When I think about that, I think about connecting with your current customer, your current yeah. customer base, and maybe even prospects in a way where maybe you're, you're spending more time and effort closing a deal, or maybe some of the things um, like Legion. I can imagine, and maybe you tell me if I'm on the right track, AI is something that could help with lead gen or um, like lead generation, or I love the Here's an example. Response. Yeah. You and I are on a call. We're meeting for the first time. You and I have not met before. Mm -hmm. We could, uh, let's say it was a Zoom call. We could have an AI integration. The one that I like is called fireflies.ai. And that will automatically take notes from our call it will transcribe the call, but it will not just transcribe it. It will synthesize takeaways from the call and action items. And what does that do for us? It means that I can sit here with my big microphone and you can sit there with your big microphone and we can stare at each other as if we were sitting at a cafe catching up like new or old friends. Yeah. And I don't yeah. have to worry or be distracted about writing notes. Writing notes like I'm doing right here. now. <laughs> That's okay. I can sit here and connect with you as yeah. a human. And that is powerful. And I have a million of these examples. And that's why I'm excited about it. Doesn't mean yes. I'm not concerned. I'm concerned about deep fakes. I'm concerned about the impact of 
AI uh, on the election, like, you know, stuff like that. I'm not political. I'm yes. Canadian. I live in the US, but I can't even vote. So um, <laughs> just to be clear, um, but like, yeah, just there's some there. scary things. Yeah, there's some scary <laughs> things. But for me, I focus on the positive and I focus on the productivity that can bring business owners. You've already mentioned, and and it's funny that I'm as I'm writing notes, but Ellie and you said Firefly. Yeah. Two huge tools that I already know could help out my life tremendously. I put myself in in a, in your shoes with that first example of the like what email what email question do you get thirty times? Like all the listeners could think, okay, like what what do I get? For me, I get a lot of pricing emails. Um, like how, how much is your CDL? How much are your CDL classes, your safety training? Blah, blah, blah. So maybe that's where I could see some help there. And I then, have a tool for you for that. What? So that, Oh, that's something separate. Okay. Text blaze it's called, and it's not an AI tool. Okay. It is complementary to what you're doing with AI. Text blaze is a Google Chrome extension okay. that enables you to save text snippets. So anytime you write a snippet of text more than once or more than twice, yes. such as outlining your pricing for your courses mm -hmm. um, and your products, save it as a text snippet and you can okay. define what text string that you would write to activate that. So for example, I would do oh. um, slash pricing. Yes. And when in Chrome, it's a Chrome extension. So when in Chrome, whenever you type that, it will then, it will then just complete, um, it will just add in that text snippet. Even cooler, if you look at the more advanced settings in text snippet, I say advanced, but it's not, it's not confusing to set up. That's why I like it. Before I paste the text yeah. snippet, I could highlight your name. So Apollonia, okay, I highlight it. Then I paste, then I do hashtag, or I do like whatever you say, it can be anything. I usually do a slash, yeah, uh, kind of yeah. like code, slash pricing. And I can sub in your name that I just highlighted in the text snippet. Mm, my goodness gracious, you are a genius. I already know why I'm just a geek. Uh, people have reached <laughs> out to you and said, we need you to write this book. We need you to be the author here. We need, what are, you know, this is kind of off, off track. What are going back to your YouTube is what, you know, this is how people found or the publisher, right. Found you. Yeah. What are some of your most popular YouTube videos? Because you are a specialist in branding. I feel like probably even marketing. Mm -hmm. um, but AI, what are some of the most helpful videos that you, that, you know, your clients have just felt, wow, this was really helpful. Most viewed video is called three free apps for content creation. <laughs> oh, wow. Imagine um, that. Trying to think of some other ones. I was yeah. one of the first affiliates on YouTube for Synthesia, which is an okay. AI avatar tool that's often used by companies for training. Wow. Um, you can oh, like wow. make an AI version of yourself uh, as an avatar. It's a, a paid service, but you can also, for a much lower subscription, you can create training videos with humans based on text input. So you give it the text and then the face animates based on the text that you give it. That's this called Synthesia. Crazy. That's a really cool one. Okay. <clears throat> that video did very well because I basically said, this is me, the Phil version, the, you know, the real version. And then this is me as an AI avatar. And it was, you could see the differences. So it's kind of entertaining. Blew um, people's mind. They're like, okay. Another one is any word. Uh, mm -hmm. So a lot of people use chat GPT to write copy. Mm -hmm. But ChatGPT is not great for writing copy unless okay. you spend a lot of time giving it a great deal of input. Yes, I agree. You probably, completely yeah. agree with you. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, everything is unlock, unleash the full potential, you know, <laughs> tapestry of um, uh, what are some other ones? Um, bespoke is a popular word. Um, all these like buzzwords that now are associated. You know, sorry to everyone who was saying these words before, but now if you use them, it sounds like it's straight out of the mouth of ChatGPT. Um, <laughs> any word oh, is a copywriting tool okay. that I use and love. Um, paid subscription, but super reasonable. Oh, and wow, what okay. I love is that it scores your copy potential. So it will create wow. 
Yeah. So it will create copy options for you multiple, and then it assigns it a score based on its predictive performance. I listen to myself speak and I'm like, God, I'm such a nerd, but I really geek out about these things. (laughs) Um, So anywhere is another one to check out. I, by the way, on my website, I have a whole list of these tools. Um, So yes, yes, you can just go there and just be like, okay, what, what is Phil Trod and what does he like? What does he endorse? I do try a lot of stuff and I don't endorse everything that I try. I really very focused on what I think small business owners need. Absolutely. Is there any, are there any categories that you felt like you haven't mentioned that could really help a small business? Um, I mean, email response, even the price, I think that text, that's huge. If you ever have something that you're repeatedly um, yeah. needing to send to clients. And so I think that was super helpful. Um, Paid the social, there's a tool called Otis and it allows you to, hmm. all you have to do is input the creative. So photos or videos, it uses oh. AI to do everything else, including the text generation for the ads. So if you're running ads on Facebook, Yes. Uh, Instagram, Google, normally you'd have to go to all separate places to run those ads. But with Otis, you can use AI to show up in all those places from one dashboard. Big fan of that tool. Oh, wow. And does it help at all? Have you, this is one thing that I've really struggled with. I haven't been able, I feel like I haven't found a tool that helps with, um, what we create in Canva. Mm -hmm. And so when we're editing a picture and we're, you know, really trying to help it stand out on Instagram or, um, really like that, that polishing piece to a piece of content. Is there something that you could think of? Absolutely. So, um, full disclosure, I am a very proud ambassador of Adobe express, which is a similar platform to Canva in that it's uh, browser based graphic design. I think it's much better than Canva. Okay. Um, for the concerns that you raised, Canva is great because it's made design democratized. And so mm-hmm. many people are able to show up online with quick templates. Mm-hmm. But the downside of that is that everyone is using the same templates and everything starts to look exactly the same. Right. So right. I like I like a solution from Adobe, which has been the leader in the design and creative world for as long as I can remember. Yes. And I find the templates are more sophisticated. The Mm. integrations with other Adobe apps like Illustrator and Photoshop. Yes. You you can link assets between platforms. Okay. You do not need to be a designer to use the platform (laughs) and to be able to thrive with it. And then finally, you can use features powered by Adobe Firefly, which is Adobe's generative AI platform. And it is so impressive. And best of all, it complies with laws and rules and respects creators. A lot of times these tools like Midjourney and Dali, there are lawsuits and stuff because they're referencing images that they don't have permission, you know, they don't have permission to reference. Whereas Adobe's built all of it in-house. It sources Adobe stock and other internal, you know, resources. And so I feel good about that as someone who's owned a branding agency and hires creatives. I think we need to be careful when we're using these AI tools and there needs to be transparency in the Mm -hmm. use of AI. There needs to be legislation in place to Mm -hmm. protect people. Uh, Mm -hmm. That's something I'm passionate about. So I would say to you, kick Canva to the curb and go try Express. I think you'll like it better. Give it a shot. Absolutely. No, I mean, I wrote that down. Obviously, I'm going to listen to this back. Let me also say, if you have a Creative Cloud subscription, a lot of businesses and people do. So if you're using Photoshop, InDesign, Illustrator, Premiere, any of these tools, you already have Adobe Express Premium included. And if it's something you just want to try before you buy it, you can use Adobe Express. They have a free plan. Okay. Um, They also have premium. It's less than the price of Canva. And it gives you access to Adobe Stock's royalty-free photo collection, which is really awesome. Yeah. Yeah, They're all like high-quality assets. I love that. I feel like that would be a burning question for the listeners is, hey, I'm using Canva. I have been for the last couple of years. Like what, what else do you have to recommend? I totally. Yes. No, that's, I like to do things different. You know, I like to like, I like to uncover the things and maybe the little gems that, that Mm -hmm. other people don't know about or, Mm -hmm. or even tools that are a little more sophisticated. Let me add that like, 
the AI space right now, almost every piece of software is integrating uh, AI in some way. And some are doing it more meaningfully than others. Truthfully, some of them Mm. are not great. Mm -hmm. And they're doing it just to say that it's an AI powered, you know, it's this, again, this, this like pressure to keep up. Yes. And so watch for the tools that are integrating AI in a meaningful way. One Mm -hmm. that a lot of people use almost every day, Grammarly. Grammarly is one of the best AI tools. Um, One of the best. I have heard so much about Grammarly and I have not yet tried it myself, but my mom, my little brother, like everyone has this this extension, this app, and I have, I've yet to use it. So I know that that would be a huge one. That's big. What about more in the book? What about more about the book? Sure. I mean, sure. I feel like you answered the question of what inspired you to write it. Um, well, publishers came knocking at my door (laughs) and said, Hey, there's a need here. What else about the book that, um, you can give us like a little, you know, just a preview. And obviously we want people to get the book and we'll be linking, um, all of your resources at the the end here, but yeah. Thank you. So I use, I bet you can relate to this because I know you're also creating content such as podcasts and posting those on YouTube for me, content creation So for you, content creation is a way to meet new people and make connections, which is just awesome. Content creation is the reason you and I are talking right now and having a conversation that we get to share with the listener. It's really powerful. Right. Content creation for me is that, but it's also my opportunity to learn about things. I'm busy. I have a few Mm -hmm. businesses. And so for me to sit down and read a book or like learn about something, it's tough. Read an article about something new and exciting. Uh, in I'm your industry, like, but it's like, uh, I can't Yeah, I'm normally it. skimming it like quickly to go, okay, let me get the high level before I have my next meeting. Yeah, um, yeah. But content creation for me, video creation means that I have a deadline and I get an opportunity to learn about something. And so okay. I've just been doing that for years. I'm like, I'm going to make a video about something that I want to learn more about. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. that has effectively turned into a book, not ever intentionally, but I'm just a curious person. I love technology. And I specifically love technology that makes my life easier. And I just, you know, to be able to bring people along for that journey, it's going to be really fun. The book has chapters that I'm more comfortable and a thought leader on, let's say like content creation, social media is one chapter that one I had to actually trim because I could write a whole book about that topic. Oh, Um, I can only imagine. Yes. Research. Uh, one chapter that you're going to find interesting is operations and logistics. Mm -hmm, Sales is another chapter security and data analysis, which I know don't sound that exciting on the surface, but But, uh, they're actually some of the most interesting chapters. You know this. People judge industries that aren't like glitz and glamour. I generally, I'm like, uh, this is how I felt when you contacted me. I was like, ooh, it's like safety, compliance. These kinds of topics are so important. And maybe they don't have the glitz of like marketing, but I'm actually more excited by your industry. I'm more excited by the industries that get judged as boring because there's more opportunity in them to do interesting things. Oh, I really appreciate that. I have preached this for 10 years now. Owning this company is that, oh my goodness, safety is so not sexy. Like it is so boring. Like are the students that come through our class initially, everyone's forced to be there to give you an idea of our clientele. And we were working with construct, you know, 300 person construction company. That's like our ideal customer. And most of those students, they they come into a class and they're like, I've already taken fall protection. This is my fifth year doing it or 10th year doing it. Or maybe this is my first year you know, in this type of industry. And I'm, I'm too afraid to ask questions because, you know, the seasoned vets in this class aren't asking questions. No one wants to be in the class and it's our job to make it exciting, engaging, yeah. and the most, the most important piece of it is rememberable. So that way her students leave and they're actually practicing the tools in the field that could help save their life or somebody else on the job site. Yeah. Love it. I also love how passionate you are about your work in your industry. And I feel like that shows. Mm. And what's really cool is that you have your brand, you have your, your corner in the industry and something that you're doing exceptionally well and doing with pride. And that's, that's what you lead with in business, you know? Mm. 
I love that. Thank you for noticing that. What do you feel that no matter the industry, no matter the size of the company, when you start working with a client, what do you feel like a lot of clients unintentionally are doing wrong? And maybe you're doing a social media scan on them or, yeah. you know, you're doing a deep dive. What are most people, what do we have wrong? Most likely. Um, there is this deep desire to be present on every social media platform or marketing channel. And nowadays we just can't do that unless you have a massive marketing department Right. Um, and a unique right. strategy for every platform. I would say rather than being average on 10 platforms, be a rock star on three or be a superstar on one wow. and focus on creating content in a way that feels selfish. Mm. What I mean by that is you get more out of the process of creating yeah. than anyone else listening. It doesn't mean the listener's not going to get value, but like, oh, wow. what do you get? So today you get some ideas and some specific tools mm -hmm. uh, and things to try in your own business that I've shared with you mm -hmm. that you might not have heard about, or you might've had to sift through and find them yourself. That is all because of you creating content and creating a format that welcomes that. And that's really cool, right? I, when I think about podcasting, I'm like, yes. when I think about podcasting, I'm like, I get so much from this that I don't even care if the listener does. I don't even care if anyone listens to it. I get so much yes, value yes, from yes. creating it. Mm -hmm. I think that's the only sustainable content strategy. Wow. I think that you really captured a lot of listeners' ears and they're thinking like, am I... I love what you said, better to be a specialist or a rock star on three platforms and being average on 10 platforms because you're mm -hmm. right, like guilty. I also feel like I felt in the beginning um, of the business, it was like, okay, how do we have a Twitter and a LinkedIn and a da -da 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 -da. and it's like, oh my goodness, we are, you know, we're not really killing it at, at Twitter. Like we're not very, you know, we weren't very active now X, but it's like, I, I felt like there was, that wasn't a passion personally yeah. of mine, like you mentioned, I wasn't actively engaged with customers or prospects on there. And so it was like time to shut down the X account to be yeah. not shut it down. But I mean, we you can keep the that. handle, but it's not somewhere that you need to feel pressure to, to, to show up in every place because also like, how are you going to have time to actually work? Right. Or spend time doing the things that you enjoy doing. Like yes. social media is not that important in my opinion. That is huge to all business owners. I think that you just spoke, spoke that is like, okay, like, wow, I can calm down and engage with, again, like my current customer base or engage in sales more. And I don't have to be like pulling my arm with social. If that's not where the passion lies, like you mentioned, like totally. some people that is the content creation piece is where the passion lies. But if it isn't, then what I hear you saying is that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> like specialize 100%. in what you do best. That's hundred yeah, percent. Oh, that's awesome. I want to ask you really quick. What about sales tools? Like have you, do you feel like with all the platforms that you've been able to experience right now, um, mess around with How, today in today's market, do you feel like there are some great AI tools to help with like lead generation and sales? Or do you really believe right now that that's like a face-to-face -face thing? That's like a human piece. Any thoughts around there? I would say AI or technology in general is good for processing or gathering the information Data. In most okay. cases, okay. I say in most cases, because even to get ChatGPT to connect to the internet, which is a newer feature, it's like, it doesn't do it naturally. It normally falls on its like, its internal knowledge base, which is not always up to date. So a little trick to people using ChatGPT, tell it to connect to the internet and find sources or citations, and that will generally prompt it. That's a to huge actually do that. Yeah. Instead of being lazy, I yeah, would say, yeah. yeah, I recommend a few sales tools in the book. I go into more detail on why you might want to use this one over another, but uh, you know, some of the big ones are like HubSpot, big brands like that. Um, you, there's really cool tools like data miner, which is actually not AI, but it's a really good oh, okay. way to scrape 
uh, information from search engines to oh, create that's a, huge. a yes. yeah to create like a targeted list of people that might be uh, appropriate for sales outreach. But you're right. You know, I mean, with your question, I'm like, think about how often we get sold to in our inboxes, yes. email and social media. I think it's far more important now to pursue human connection than okay. it is to just like cold pitch and automate that. We're getting real good at ignoring that or deleting it yes. or marketing a spam. And yes. I would say yes. just be careful when you use those tools. That's great advice. That is, that is great. And I feel like that helps put me on track because something that you mentioned, I really resonated at the beginning of the podcast is that, um, at least for me personally, I can get caught up in all the new bells and whistles, like wanting to be up and, you know, wanting to try all these new things like ADHD, trying to, you know, oh my gosh, I need to catch up with all the AI tools. I want to, I want to dabble in all these things. And I think that's where as business owners, we can get lost with that time. And I keep mm -hmm. hearing you refer back to, you know, stick to what you love doing yes. and don't take away from that piece. And I, I'm going to take a shot in the dark here, but I feel like you keep referring back to that because you might have had a ton of experience working with burnt out entrepreneurs. Is that right? Or people that come to you and they're like, I, I can't even think about AI tools right now. I'm running a business. Like, how does this make sense for me? Is that why you keep saying that? Yeah. Yeah. I encounter people like that all the time, but I think it's even, even beyond that, it's just really important and a passion of mine that people have a business that fulfills them. Yeah. I mentioned to you that I can tell yeah. your business fulfills you and that's you're in a really lucky position. I'm in a really lucky position. Here we mm. are talking, having a conversation that's beneficial for us mm -hmm. and beneficial for other people. But I love what I do day to day. It doesn't mean I love every aspect of business. Yes, There's moments yes. of it that I'm like, oh, this is tough. Oh, this is hard. I hate this. But yes. yes, yes, yes. if everyone could focus on doing what they love to do, then people would be a lot happier and a lot more successful. And so that has always been the focus of my business from the beginning is like, how can we build a business Mm -hmm. you know, generate demand, something that is rooted in what you love to do because mm -hmm. it won't feel like work. I think it's hugely important. I completely agree with you. Again, I just, I already can tell why producers came knocking at your door, Bill, because <laughs> you're I'm not kidding. I, I understand like your communication skills are out of this world. The way that you can communicate on AI, something that people are like, man, this might be over my head. Thank I feel like you. you just rattled off. Like it, really seriously, I feel like you just rattled off a ton of tools and explained them in a way that your average person can be like, okay, I can understand what Bill's saying. Like this well, might be a tool for me. That it's funny you picked up on that because mm -hmm. that has become my part-time job and essentially my full-time job unintentionally. <laughs> um, you know, I, I mean, when I started posting on YouTube, mm -hmm. it was to help and educate people. And most of my content was about branding, but mm -hmm. I was pulled into kind of the software exploration and marketing tools. And then obviously AI, mm -hmm. um, it's what I really love to do. I'm really passionate about it, as you can tell. I can and tell. I think it is my skill set. It mm -hmm. is. I love communicating this stuff. And it's mm -hmm. proof that if you lean into the things that you enjoy, yeah. You will create opportunity in the process by doing the things you love to do and by getting even better at those things. So thank you. Thank you for that compliment. It actually, it really means a lot to me because AI is a, is a tough topic to talk about on a stage, mm -hmm. on a, you know, being on a stage creates a weird dynamic that the person up on stage elevated knows more than the people below. And that's just not yeah. the case with AI. It's just not the case. Mm -hmm. I'm not learning and studying the latest chip information and, <laughs> you know, super tech detailed processing. Yeah. I actually get to a point where I'm like, nope, I don't want to know any more about that. I want to focus on the practical tools for small business owners. That is my world. That has come across Phil so clear, like me analyzing, like, okay, I'm already, my mind is always spinning. Right. And I'm like the summary of this conversation, 
oh my gosh, is just this. Like what I keep hearing you say is that you don't have to be overwhelmed by AI tools. You don't have to be exploring all the new bells and whistles if that's not where your time needs to be focused right now. Really what I heard you saying is look at what is repetitive in your life. Like yes. everyone is going to be different. Look at what is administrative and that's not what your heart is at doing. If it's not responding to emails, like the, the certain subject that you keep getting 30 times. And so think of everybody, whether you're a manager, whether you're a business owner, whether you run a department, you're a one man show, whatever it is right now, think of what of those repetitive tasks. And then from there's what I hear you saying, sure, explore AI and see what could be taken off your plate in that sense to free you up to be doing what you love to be doing, because that is going to lead you to living a fulfilled life. You wrap that own, you wrap that up in a bow. Absolutely. (laughs) Perfectly. I am impressed. You've been listening. That's you. That's all you though, is you communicated that so clearly to me that, that, you know, that's really what I'm getting. And, and too, um, you mentioned this, um, previously on the show was, Hey, get on your website. Like if you're, it, you are interested, Hey, Phil, like I am like, I'm, I'm at that step where I have time on my plate. I want to explore some tools. We can go on your website. Is that right? Um, Absolutely. And- it's a new page I'm building on my site, um, okay. specific to the tools that I recommend. So YouTube is a good place to go. Um, I'm posting there every single week, but yes, um, Thank you. hopefully I have this page done by the time, um, by the time this episode posts, but regardless, I send emails every single week. Um, I have some freebies on my oh, website awesome. also with branding resources, worksheets, all kinds of stuff. Um, yeah, yeah. This is very much in my orbit and very much what I'm tackling every single day in the content I create and share. And Perfect. you synthesized it perfectly. That was so great. No, you're fantastic. Anything else, Phil, that you want to leave the audience with? Again, if you're a solopreneur, you're an intrapreneur, you're working inside an organization, leading a large team, or you are a business owner, going back to that 300, 300 employee construction business, you know, type of business. And so any advice or something that you want to lead, leave us with? that is in this AI space, like what can we look forward to? What could be some tidbits of advice maybe? Don't be afraid to ask for help. I'm Mm. noticing just in, in the business landscape in general that the direction of things, people are, are, are focusing on specialists rather than being generalists, which is admittedly what I was for a long time. I can jump and speak to like email marketing and social media and branding and AI. Um, we're really at an interesting time right now where I think a lot of businesses are focusing on one thing that they do exceptionally well and by becoming an industry leader in that thing. So I would say ask for help in those areas where they're not your core zones of genius or areas of competency to free you up time and space to think about those things that you are experts in, the things that you love spending time individually or as an organization and where you make high impact. I think that's that that those are the right things to be thinking about and it will involve asking for help along the way. Completely agree with you. Um I was trying to mute my mic there so I feel like the leaf they're getting closer to my door here hear. but good I'm glad. Well good. I think that that is golden advice because if you just think I think about my personal experience when I'm looking for a service, I'm looking for a company to work with, I'm looking for a specialist. You're looking for a specialist. So to not go always the, you know, the general route, like really dive in and explore that for yourself too. I mean, I think that that's fantastic. I, I can't thank you enough, Phil. I'm excited to continue to learn from you, especially on your YouTube channel. Like that's like, you are an artist you're a creator, you are a communicator, you're all these things. And it just, you blow my mind, like how talented you are, how skilled you are at communication. So I can't wait to keep following you. Where other, where, have we missed any places that people can get connected with you on? We've mentioned YouTube. Yeah. Thank you. YouTube is great. Instagram is great. And LinkedIn is great. I would say to our, to your listeners, if they made it this far, then, you know, let's connect, like say hello on LinkedIn or say hello. Um, you know, let us know that you, 
you listen or there's something that you're going to try out, feel free to share that. I love hearing from people. And thanks for asking such great questions and leading the conversation. I've really, really enjoyed it. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I want to stay connected. We're going to stay connected. And you heard it from Phil. He is yes. not shy to uh, also be connected with. Like, I'm hearing you say we can reach out to you on, on platforms if we have questions, if you want to dive deeper on a certain topic today that we glazed over. So thank you so much for your time today, Phil. And uh, we'll chat again. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you.